Now that we've established some key terms in regards to the process of meiosis, we can begin to talk about the actual process in a little bit more detail. We're going to continue our discussion on the introduction, and we're just going to entitle this next flowchart as Introduction 2. We're still going to be looking at some broad concepts, but these broad concepts are now going to work off of the terms that we've already established, and we're going to look specifically at two different types of reproduction. Again, what we have to understand is that meiosis is a process involved in this, in, involved in reproduction. And reproduction is simply a characteristic of life, creating life from life. And in order to understand meiosis, we have to first understand the two different basic types of reproduction seen in biology. We'll begin first by looking at asexual reproduction. Many people already understand what the idea of asexual reproduction is. A usually just means without, and sexual would just mean sexual. So this is without sexual, without the concept of sex involved. So what is asexual reproduction specifically defined as? We can say it's specifically the idea of a single parent um, produced offspring. So one single parent, without the help of another, produced one single, usually one single offspring. That single offspring, this offspring, this child, let's say, that was produced asexually, can either be, and it's usually noted as either single-celled, or of course then the other would be multicellular. So there are two options in terms of cellularity, let's say. That asexually produced offspring can be single-celled or multicelled. If it's single-celled, we usually refer to its origin as simply splitting, meaning that the parent simply split into two. Because if you take a parent, and this is a single-celled organism, and you split it into two, you end up with two new single-celled organisms, right? And that's simply the idea of a single-celled split asexually produced offspring. Multicellular, the let's say terminology is a little bit different. Sometimes we say that when we have a multicellularly produced asexual offspring, um, this multicellular organism either budded off, so we can say it buds off, or maybe it even fragments off. So those are two different terms you should understand. Um, just simply what we're saying here is the idea that a multicellular asexually produced organism is going to either bud off or fragment off, and a single-celled one will just usually typically just split off like I drew up here. In addition to this idea of a single parent produced offspring, we have to also look at the idea of where the offspring comes from in terms of mitosis and meiosis. What we can say specifically is that the offspring itself, so we'll write that down over here, um, let's say offspring um, are a result of mitotic division. So let's keep an eye on the terminology that we're using. Mitotic division would then refer to meiosis or mitosis. Of course, this refers to mitosis. What we simply mean by this is the idea that we have this, this double possibility, let's say. The idea that we can have one, I'm going to write this term 2n parent, or we can have one, just 1n parent. What I want you to become very, very familiar with and very comfortable with is what 2n and n mean. And I'm going to write them down right up here just for your own uh, understanding. 2n simply refers to the idea of diploid, which I'll get into in just a second, and n refers to as haploid. Anytime I write 2n, I'm uh, simultaneously also meaning diploid. Anytime I write n, I'm simultaneously also meaning haploid. So, what happens is, offspring are a result of mitotic division. That simply means that if you have one diploid, remember diploid, parent undergoing mitotic division, that's going to end up or end with one 2n offspring. Everything stays the same. 
Why does it say the same? Because this is asexual reproduction. It's reproduction without the combination of gametes. And we'll get into that when we get into the sexual reproduction, but just understand that things are staying the same. This is a theme of asexual reproduction. So if I gave you this answer, you can of course fill in the rest for this one. One haploid parent will give us one haploid offspring, of course. This is simply because we are asexually, mitotically reproducing. We are not utilizing meiosis yet. Meiosis has not occurred in an asexually reproducing organism. Simply speaking, asexual reproduction produces clones. And what I mean by clones is simply that when we have daughter cells, let's say, and daughter cells are simply cells that are the offspring of a parent cell, let's say. All of these daughter cells are genetically different or identical, you think, if they're clones of their parents. They are genetically identical, of course. Daughter cells are all genetically identical to parent, we'll say. And another way to just say this is that they're direct copies, simply as that. Asexually reproduced Reprodu anytime you use asexual reproduction, you are utilizing cloning. You are creating the same exact daughter cell as parent cell. In addition, asexual reproduction, um, we're running a little out of space here, so I'm just going to uh, squeeze this in over here, involves no fusion of, and I mentioned this before, gametes. Why does it not involve the fusion of gametes? What are gametes? If we go back to our previous flowchart, gametes are sex cells. These are the sex cells that are produced by some organisms that reproduce sexually. If you're not reproducing sexually, you are then reproducing asexually. That makes total sense then that you, of course, do not need to fuse gametes. You do not need to fuse sperm and egg because you are not utilizing mom and dad. You are not utilizing two different parents to create one completely different offspring. All you need to do is bud off. All you need to do is split. All you need to do is fragment. These three things, these three three processes, all end up in direct cloning in the idea of a daughter cell being genetically identical to the parents as basic copies. Overall, the last thing I want to end on with the asexual side of the reproduction is um, just the sim simply the advantages. And I'm just going to draw this out over here. Um, on the other side, we'll do sexual. Since we don't have room, we'll create a new video for that as well. So what is the point of asexual reproduction? If it's creating copies, it must have some sort of basis. It must have some sort of reasoning, some sort of mechanism in the, let's say, overall world of biology in terms of advantages. Well, first of all, you do not need to find a mate. So there's no mates needed. Now, of course, you might be thinking, oh, does that mean that that person or that thing, that organism, completes a very lonely, boring life? Well, in this situation, yes, but it prefers that. Because when you live a lonely, boring life, you actually save time. And this is literally what happens. And if you save time in not needing to find a mate, what do we always say as humans? If you, Time is what? Time is money. But in biology, time is another way of just saying saving energy. If you save time, you simultaneously are saving energy because you are not utilizing energy to move around, try to find a mate, try to impress a mate, utilizing many of the different strategies seen all throughout sexual reproduction. You don't need any of that. There's no need to find any sort of partner so that you save a bunch of time and you also save a bunch of energy for that reason. Save time, save money is like how I think um, asexually reproducing organisms think. In addition, asexual reproduction is a very rapid process. It does not take much energy or much, let's say, complicated um, biological reactions and processes to split, bud off, or fragment. These are simple processes that happen very easily and very rapidly. So it's a very good advantage for that reason. And most importantly, I think, and this is something that exam questions usually ask, this is the true advantage many exam questions ask, is this. The organisms... If they are asexually reproducing, they must, organisms must, absolutely must be um, in a favorable environment. What I simply mean by this is that you are not going to be producing genetically identical copies of yourself unless you know 100% that the environment that you're in is good. 
If you are completing and completing asexual reproduction over and over and over again, and you're struggling to live, you are creating genetically identical daughters, daughter cells that are also going to struggle to live. But if you're living in a favorable environment, if your life is very successful in a nice environment as an asexually reproducing organism, if you reproduce asexually, you're going to produce identically, let's say, well-adapted offspring. Because you yourself were well-adapted. You were in a favorable environment that successfully uh, allowed you to reproduce. And if it successfully allowed you to reproduce, that means that your offspring should also have that same success. What we can simply say about this is that the major advantage or the major, let's say, the advantages with an asterisk. And what I mean by this asterisk is that that asterisk means the environment, let's say, must be stable. Because if the environment is constantly changing and you're producing the same thing over and over and over again, if you're producing tons and tons of clones, then you are obviously going to be producing things that are not going to survive. But if the environment is the same, you're going to produce the same exact daughter cells, and you're going to have the same exact success. Again, a theme of asexual reproduction is sameness, and that is why it's successful because of this idea of being the same over and over and over again. But this is no fun as biologists. As biologists, we want to see variation. We want to see change. And we want to see an adaptation to the environment. We're going to start seeing that once we look at sexual reproduction in our next video.